All right. Great morning, Mount Zion Teenage Church. Um, I will be teaching today's lesson on overcoming fear. Um, I will not start with a joke like Minister Mike did last Sunday, um, but I will start with prayer. So let's close our eyes and be prepared to hear a word. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for protecting us and keeping us during this time. Father God, we just thank you for you being you in our lives, Father God. We just ask that during this time, Father God, that you just keep us and protect us, Father God, as you have been. Father God, we pray for those who are on the front lines. We pray for the nurses and the doctors. We pray for those who work at the grocery stores. We pray for all of those who may be unemployed at this time, Father God. Father God, we just thank you and we just pray for this country. We pray for this, this, the world, Father God. And we pray, Lord, for an end, a swift end to this pandemic. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. So I'll be talking about um, overcoming fear. Um, Mr. Minister Mike talked about um, fear last Sunday when he was talking about negative emotions. And one of the negative emotions he mentioned was fear and how fear can paralyze you. Um, paralyzing fear um, stops you from doing what God has called you to do, uh, whether it's preaching the word, evangelizing to other people, um, your classmates, um, just living a life that exhibits God or that shows that you're a disciple of Christ. So um, our lives are to be ministry. Um, we're all ministers. So we're supposed to be living a life that gives God glory. Um, that's our worship, our daily worship. Um, so I'm going to go into the word, but I'm going to start with a the definition of fear. Um, and I looked it up yesterday. <laughs> Um, fear is just defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger, anxious concern, a profound reverence and awe, especially towards God, reason for alarm, danger. Um, we are to have a fear, a healthy fear, a reverence for God. Um, but we are also to fear certain things like I know I'm scared of bears and certain things like that. Um, not walking in the street when cars are coming, that type of stuff. Or, um, But we are to not fear um, doing what God has called us to do. Um, we are supposed to um, just, you, you know, uh, be bold in the word. And actually, um, one of the scriptures we always seem to quote um, when talking about fear is, and I'm going to read, 2 Timothy 1, 7, and I'm reading it out of the New King James Version. Uh, there we are. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Now, this is in a letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. Um, I believe he was in prison during this time. He felt that Timothy might have been weakened spiritually and was a little scared to do what um, God had called him to do. Because when Paul was in, in prison, there were things that Timothy was supposed to be doing for the ministry. Um, but also, if you go further into verse 8, Therefore, do not be ashamed of, his of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the... In the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9, who has, sa who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his power, to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Okay, so basically we are to, we are supposed to, According to his own purpose, we're supposed to do things. So we're supposed to be bold in what we do. Um, but also, now in my studies and teaching about this, um, I've learned that there's over a hundred places in the Bible where God says, do not fear. Um, many times it's accompanied by, I am with you. 
Um, so when we are fearful of anything, um, doing what God has called us to do, stay in a speech, um, doing what's right when at the right times, we are to know that God is with us. Even now during this coronavirus and what's going on in the, the country and globally, God is still with us. He's still here. He's still watching over us. He still loves us. Even when we're sleeping, he's watching over us. Um, he's better than ADT and, and um, Xfinity or the ring. Um, but also, um, I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 5. And all the way down to verse 7. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So God made us. He did not make us to have a spirit of fear. And even pastors said this uh, one time, if God did not give us a spirit of fear, you know where that spirit came from. It came from Satan. So we're not to operate in the ministry doing that. Um, I was going to teach a little bit on Gideon, but um, I thought he didn't really do things the right way. But God was patient with even Gideon and talking about fear because he was scared. He didn't want to do what God had called him to do. And God was very patient with him. But we're supposed to do what God has called us to do. He has equipped us and enabled us to do those things which uh, may seem difficult, even talking and teaching on YouTube um, for the first time ever. Um, so we, we're we just looking for to try to get over that negative emotion um, of fear. Um, I've heard many times that Fear is described as false expectations appearing real. Whether you're fearful that um, you might get a, lo a low grade on a, on a test. Now, if you don't study, you're more than likely going to get a low grade on a test. But you might be fearful of anything else, something else, um, whether speaking in public, whether it's evangelizing to your classmates, whether it's standing up for what you, what, you know, what you're, what you're supposed to as a Christian, um, you know, those type of things. We're not to be fearful in doing that. We're supposed to be doing it boldly. And when you do act boldly and respond boldly, people respond to that because they see your confidence. They see that, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. I mean, you know, when you see people that are, even that they're wrong and they're speaking boldly, they do, well, you can kind of see what's going on now. <laughs> they do gather um, a, a following. So we're to gather a following, but uh, not following like that, but we're all to kind of speak the word of God boldly because it's the truth. And um, we're to do that boldly for those who, um, especially ministering. Um, I know sometimes I would have something for us to do, but um, I would like for you to kind of come back with, um, if you can, during this time, since you're at home, um, some ways that you have gotten over fear during this time. This, um, the, if you turn on the television, you constantly see so many things going on. And we're to, number one, pray seek God's face um, with anything, everything. Um, seek, because he says in his word, he's with you. He will be there with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He, he says that and his promises are true. Trust and believe even during this time, you know, as for myself, for myself being home alone and having to work and things like, I do thank God because I don't have to worry about some things that some other people may have to. And um, and also it's kind of furthering my relationship with Christ, um, even being home during this time period. Um, also to just um, read the word, read passages. If you're fearing, if you're feeling fearful, read the passages where he says 
he's with us. There are so many. Um, I have saw so many different things talking about how it's over 100 passages where he says he's, he's there and he's with us. And so we just thank him for that. We can't thank him enough for that. And um, you also have your, your church family that you can reach out to, your fellow members in Bible study to talk about any fears that you may have or anything like that. But we just thank God that he has given us his word and He's his promises about just being able to overcome fear, that negative emotion, not to be paralyzed by it or um, stuck by fear. So we just going to thank God for this time. I thank you for all those who have watched <laughs> um, this because like I said, this is my first time. So I'm overcoming a fearful situation myself in being on YouTube um, to talk about the word of God. And so we just thank you. And I'm going to close with a prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for you being you in our lives. We thank you, God, for not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind or self-discipline, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you said you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you tell us to fear not because you are with us. So we thank you, Lord, for being with us. And Lord, we just thank you for how you have you love us and you keep us. And Lord, for those who may be watching this and do not know you, Father God, we pray, Lord, that they will come to know you in a pardon of their sins, Father God. We pray that they will come to have a closer relationship with you. And we're just thanking you in advance for what you have, what you're going to do, Father God, during this time, and what you have done, Father God, and what you're continuing to do even today. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Have a good day. Um, we'll see you next week.